Hey, let's bring up our single best chart, which talks about a backstory I'm getting through the beginning of 2016. Everybody recalibrating through January. Uh, there's the S&P 500. This is the 401k. I'm in the double leveraged all cash fund, so I don't care. <laughs> but if you go back and look at the 10 years, 96 to 06, basically we cyclically went nowhere. Kate, are we beginning a new decade malaise? I don't think we're going to begin a new decade of malaise and equities, but we are in a really challenged period. I think one of the things that we do, Tom, when we're looking at the equity market today versus last decade or a few decades ago, is say, you know, what are the quality of the corporate balance sheets? How sustainable are earnings levels? You know, how significantly could we expect a decline in margins? And, you know, all of our stress tests are not suggesting a significant deterioration. That doesn't mean you're going to have huge earnings growth. <clears throat> and so we're going to really have to see the animal spirits return, and I think, in order okay. to push the market up. Michael Feroli is certainly worried about us. Yeah, you know, Michael Feroli at J.P. Morgan with a terminal He's value, and it's side. driving yeah. ever yep. uh, lower. But you go to animal spirits. Bring up the chart again. And I would suggest a lift here is a nominal GDP and a leveraged China lift through the last 8, 9, 10 years. That's evaporating. Where's your animal spirit at the top of any given blue chip stocks corporate line? Look, I think animal spirits for equities in general have been driven by policy um, really over the last seven years. And that's what I worry about the most right now is that if we don't get confidence in the policymakers, <clears throat> we won't have people willing to take incremental risk. We see cash levels at institutional investors, particularly asset allocators, relatively high uh, relative to history. We see cash levels at corporate uncovered balance sheets relatively high. I think people are really looking for a catalyst to get the Okay, but, but you are in the, the crosshairs of this. I don't mean to interrupt, yeah. Vani, but I think this is critical. Financial engineering, everybody's been tarred and feather over use of cash. Buying back shares is a bad use of cash? I'm not convinced it's a bad use of cash, and particularly if multiples come down a couple points, like we've had a good rally this week, but if we were to go back to, say, multiples where we were last week, a company can ask this question, does it make sense if they have confidence in their own business? And I think that's a signal that we need to understand that buybacks give. This is not just about trying to goose the pay of executives. This is also a recognition that businesses are fundamentally sound and that it makes sense as, as a use of cash. You're just back from Greece and, and also London and Paris, so you were... What a life for you, know. Oh, yeah, speaking to clients, right. so it was, it was a little bit of work involved. But when you talk about incremental yield, you know, are you headed to, to, to the likes of Greece like Hans for, for that? You know, we, we've been careful to reach too far into uh, lower quality areas to get a, a, an additional bit of yield at this point. But I will tell you that we are looking at places in the market that have been ignored and unloved um, as opportunities to reallocate at this point. We're trying not to be super contrarians, but really to continue to have a quality bias. But we do recognize that the market is, um, you know, closer to max pessimistic levels than we've seen in the last few years. Um, Hans, I have a question for a man who is on the Committee of Sovereign Risk when it comes to the institutional international f finance. F give me a sense of the sovereign risk with China right now? Should we be as worried as we are? Well, I, I would say in broad terms, I don't think people need to be as worried about everything as they are. It's just, you know, we've been driven so much by emotion. Um, but in, in China, I mean, clearly there, there's a debt problem. Um, the question is, what are going to be the ramifications of it working out? I mean, the there's probably too much debt in the system. It's been driven by sort of global low rates. Um, the process by which you work out the debt problem can be very catastrophic or it can just provide an opportunity for a thoughtful restructuring. I think it's pretty open still the question of what China will do. Um, you could end up in a situation, I mean the issue that they're really dealing with is capital flight. So there's a possibility of capital controls. Um, the work out of the debt within the system there I don't see as being really that much of a problem. Um, I'm more concerned about, you know, possibly some of the NPL portfolios being worked out in a way that it's transparent that there isn't, you know, real inclusion of the foreign partners in the process. But so I'm, I'm not as paranoid about China as most investors are. You talked about correlation just a little bit earlier in the chat and discussing, I mean, we're at such, such significantly high correlated levels at the moment, but that seemed to start to break down at the beginning of this week. We've heard Tom calling it a messy week. We've got the yen going one direction, gold going another. 
Are we starting to see a disintegration in the correlation that we've seen at such high levels for this year? <laughs> a disintegration of the correlation. Um, I think that's just a normalization of markets where you take a look at the different investment opportunities and you assess them one by one and don't worry about the sort of wave of emotion. Um, that, that, that's a, you know, a positive thing. It's giving people a sense you know, we're starting to see the differentiation of, in our world, the asset managers who pick the right plays. So whoever's getting a turnaround in performance because they've made the right calls and held their breath and bought the right things, you know, it's playing out now. So I, I've been, I'm glad to see that the markets are becoming a little bit more <clears throat> rational and it's just not correlating to 